use the triple point data for water to estimate the saturation pressure at negative 20. Now you say to yourself, what are we asking to calculate? P sat at negative 20 degrees C for what? For water? Hey, let's just go into the textbook, open our textbook, flip a couple pages, find it, and you'll find that the value we're going to have to estimate, I can get, somebody already put it in the book, there it is. But let's pretend it doesn't exist. Let's do what these relationships help somebody else do to percolate or fill up the table that's in our textbooks. And so what you do is you say, okay, up, use this equation. It's called the clausius clapeyron equation. So let's take a look at it. It says, let's identify some terms. This is the rate of change of the natural log of the pressure with respect to temperature. So that's that, the derivative with respect to temperature of what? The natural log of pressure. And it's for saturated states. So it's for the saturation pressure. So it's how does the natural log of pressure change with temperature for saturation states? It's related to a change in enthalpy going from one phase to the other phase, saturated liquid to vapor, that would be one phase change, or saturated solid to vapor, or saturated uh, solid to saturated uh, liquid. So you really have three changes bet between three separate phases, okay? And then what is R? Well, it's a gas constant for water vapor, so it's R bar divided by the molar mass, and then T, temperature. Now, you look at it, you say, anytime I see R and T, I suspect they've made some sort of PV is equal to RT, so probably the water vapor behaves as an ideal gas, hence that T better be in degree Kelvin. When in doubt. You can always just make it in Kelvin and keep it in Kelvin and you'll be safe. But believe me, don't put in degree C and how many people lost a lot of points on the last exam because they just waltzed in and threw in degree C an equation that needed absolute temperature. So draw out this diagram. It's called a PT diagram. And you come up, there's a point you come up further, there's a point, you come up like this, and it continues on ad infinitum. You remember this diagram, pressure temperature diagram? This is the CP, this is the TP. What? CP is the critical point. What is the TP? Triple point. And we have phase regions where out here it's the vapor. Somebody might call that gas. Here is liquid region, and this is solid region. True. This is a very important diagram. And when you have phase change going across this way, you're going liquid to vapor. That's very common. We do a lot of that. And so our whole thermodynamic tables are interested in that phase change. Also, you go this way to that way. That's uh, solid to liquid. That's melting, solidification. And this way to that way, what is that? You know, well, it's been a while. Maybe you thought about it, but sublimation. That's right. That's what happens when you go and you get some ice cubes out of the freezer, and they've been in there for a, a month or two, and you look at the tray, and the, the water is just kind of eroded around that. And it's like, where did the ice go? Sublimated, okay, into the dry freezer. Okay, so this equation works anywhere where you have the saturation pressure. So this, this sequence of points is the saturation pressure as a function of temperature. Where I just sketched it out, hey, that's in that one phase change region, solid to vapor. If I go out here, liquid to, well, at negative 20 degrees C, where do you think water's at? They didn't tell me the pressure, but they're talking about saturation pressure, true? So, yeah, the triple point temperature is numerically what value, and to critical point temperature is numerically what value? About 0 0.01 degrees C, 0 degrees C. 
And then it's like uh, 374 degrees C. And so you could think about this temperature scale there. So we're, we're, we're down in this region, aren't we? We're down in this region in here, somewhere right in there. And so what they're wanting to do is say, no, using the triple point data, knowing that the saturation pressure for water at 0.01 .01 degrees C, we looked that up, um, that's uh, 0.6113 kPa, okay? So we know that this pressure, 0.6113 kPa, knowing some other values at the vicinity, let's like take a look at this one. How about delta H, which is the enthalpy going from solid to vapor? That's like uh, HIG, uh, going from solid to vapor. That's that phase change enthalpy that's available in our textbook. It's uh, at the triple point, it's a 2834.8. Uh, uh, kilojoules per kilogram, and R, we know what R is, 8.314 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin divided by 28, not 28, errors on my mind, 18.02 kilograms per kilomole. Isn't that the molar mass of water? And then T is our temperature. So Using this information, can we predict what is the saturation pressure at negative 20 and then compare it with the table value? Okay. All right. What you do with this equation is you separate and integrate. So let me just go through it. So separate that dt and put it on the other side. Then go ahead and integrate. Well, when are you going to integrate from and to? First of all, delta H and R are going to stay constant during the integration, so they come outside the integration. We're going to integrate from where we start at, we're going to start at uh, uh, 0 degrees, or close enough, 0 0.01 degrees C and end up to 20 degrees C, right? And here, you're going to start at the corresponding whatever for the start and to the final. Okay. <clears throat> if you integrate, this is the easiest integral. So you have the natural log of the saturation pressure evaluated at those limits. Initial, final limit. All right. You have the delta H divided by R. You have to integrate 1 over T squared dt. It's been a while. True, integration, a little bit of a challenge. Negative, one over T. Thumbs up? Great, that's good. And you evaluate at the same corresponding limit. This limit A needs to match that one. That limit B needs to match that one. I don't know why I called it A and B, it's the first and second limits, but they have to match, okay? So, good little review of calculus. So what we get is we get the natural log of the saturation pressure at, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it this way, negative 20 degrees C compared to the saturation pressure at the triple point. I'll just put TP for triple point. Is equal to that change in enthalpy for that phase change at negative 20, which is we already talked about, R. And then I'm going to do this. I'm going to put uh, this negative sign always bothers you, right? So if you put a plus there, this switches location. Remember that? Okay, good. So what we'll write here is we'll write that um, you're going to have 1 over T at the um, triple point minus 1 over T at negative 20. True? Good. So uh, the values, I'm running out of room, you can put in for the triple point saturation pressure. We know that. Delta H, we know. The R, we know. The temperature to triple point, it's 
273.16 Kelvin. If you need five digits, you can put it in, but I'm just emphasizing it's 273.15 plus 0.01. And then this one is 253 Kelvin. True? You can put the 0.15 if you like. It's a, not going to make a big difference. But when you solve this equation now for PSAT, at negative 20 degrees C for water, you find that it calculates to 1033 kPa, which is compares very well with the book's value.